Jesse, yeah. are you ready for music therapy today? <laughs> Sweet girl. Did you stay awake long enough for music therapy? Jesse mm. is on her way back from a serious flip. She's not quite 100% yet, but she is on her way back. And we have two more okay. sessions. <laughs> and we're going to take a little break from music therapy. Summer break. Just a little summer break. And Zoe is a new homeowner. She just is going to settlement on her house, her first <laughs> home tomorrow. So it's a good time. But I wanted to tell you guys that Zoe's company and the music therapy um, company that she works for gives virtual lessons. So any of you who might be interested in having sessions with Zoe or another music therapy um, music therapist in their within their company, we'll leave a link below. And if you guys are interested, you can check it out and, and sign do, up no matter where you are. Yeah, we do lessons right now. I have people all over the United States that are taking lessons right now and. We do ukulele groups, guitar groups, all sorts of different things. So if you're interested or have some extra time that you need to fill and want to learn an instrument, check us out. Ooh. Give us a call. That is really awesome. <laughs> I think people will appreciate that. Jesse's yeah. ready to rock and roll. Yeah. Jesse, Jesse. You're already singing. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. <laughs>
heard today, I got an email from Zoe's boss, the owner of Neurosound Music Therapy, the company that we use um, for the kids' therapy services. So she sent me an email and has offered you all a free consultative session. And then you can also get, if you decide to sign up, you can get 10% off of your therapy if you mention six blind kids you know, to her when you go to their website to fill out the form. So if you're interested in that, it's a pretty good deal. Um, we don't get anything from this. We're not uh, sponsored by them in any way. We've not received any compensation for sharing this information with you. We just believe in it and, you know, want to help them out, want to help you out kind of thing. Um, one of the things when we came back to YouTube after our big long break, one of the stipulations that I had with Joe um, was that we would not do any sponsored videos until we kind of, you know, got our, got things back together and, and it uh, doesn't mean we'll never do it, but for now we decided to take that pressure off ourselves. It can be, it can be a lot of pressure. So that's, um, that's just one of the things that we decided to do for the time being until we get, you know, back to doing whatever it is that we're going to be doing here. So, so take advantage of that. You know, there's a free consultation for you if you're interested in receiving services services from them, therapy services, Neurosound Music. The link will be in the description on the video to their website and you can fill out a form. Let us know if any of you decide to do it. It, um, it should be fun and I, I think it'll help them out a lot. We'll just spread awareness for music therapy. It is an amazing and miraculous thing that really helps people in our community. So I hope you all take advantage of it. Our time of music has come to an end. Our time of music was such great fun, oh It's okay to feel the blues today. Yeah, it's our last day of music. I'll see you again in August. But for now, Go, go, go. Can you believe it's come to an end?
Isn't that cool? It just, it's got such a beautiful mellow sound. Isn't that neat? You make it sound so pretty. <laughs> It's, it's very dog. addictive, it's isn't so it? Cool. And you know, I like it because it is so mellow that it's good for meltdowns. Yes, that's what, exactly what I was thinking. Like having this kind of yeah. corner to bring out when you need it. Yeah, just like the kalimba sleep. and the ocean drum. Or oh, the sleep. sleep. I, we could record it. Oh, okay. yeah, it's beautiful. Or even just bring it in and like for Jesse, put it on the bed, the vibrations of it. Oh. Put it on the bed and like play just, it with her on the bed when she's... That's kind of how I do with her, and she yeah. just, yeah, I don't push her, but I just do it, and she, you know, she kind of comes down from the thing, but we have some really amazing subscribers, we don't we? Do. Oh. Isn't that so cool? So cool. Okay, so speaking of hoarding, I need to come clean with you guys. Yes, I struggle just as much as Joe does. Okay, and I'm kind of inspired to come to you and talk to you about this today for two reasons. Number one, the mail opening video that we recently did, as well as the follow up video where we asked you guys to stop sending us mail. So, so, okay, so the real reason. The number one, now all those things, all those suggestions that we made about donating to other people and me, we, we mean that. We mean that with from the bottom of our hearts. But the thing that I really didn't feel comfortable saying and didn't feel like I could say because I don't ever want to hurt anybody's feelings is that I really struggle with this. You guys, I am still in this closet, this scary, scary, humongous closet of mine where all the stuff that I don't know what to do with or don't have need of goes to live forever. And I'm really trying hard to get that cleaned out. You know, we did Joe's office recently. This is a huge struggle, not only with us, but I think many, many people. Well, the other thing that has inspired me to do this video, um, Joe has a cousin and his wife has a YouTube channel called Angela Brown Ask a House Cleaner. Now, I highly recommend her channel. You know, the disclosure is that she's family, okay? But I highly recommend her channel because she's got some very interesting tips. She actually owns a house cleaning business and she has really good practical down-to-earth tips for regular people like you and me who just need to clean, you know, some encouragement sometimes to clean their spaces. And she is kind of on this thing about, you know, hoarding. And hoarding doesn't have to be that extreme thing that you see on TV where it just comes and takes over the whole house and it becomes a very unsanitary, unhealthy living condition. We're we're nowhere near at that point. And I hope that nobody watching this is either. If you are, you know, I really want to encourage you. She started a Facebook group over there that, you know, with other people who struggle with this stuff too, you know, to just go and just kind of, you know, maybe get some encouragement from other people who are going through the same thing you are. But, but, you know, the struggle is real. And what happens through the years, I don't want to be just showing Joe's side. I, I have made a little bit more progress there, but, but I'm stuck in this closet for the longest time because I'm trying to make sure I don't show anything that's too embarrassing, but I'm stuck here, you know, partly because my contractor is so busy and he's taking a long time. And the longer he takes, the more discouraged I get. And it's frustrating. And you guys, I'm not kidding you. I feel like I am bailing out the Titanic with a Dixie cup. It, it really is like that. And so sometimes, you know, we have to make a plea to please stop, help us. You can help us this way, you know, as we try to get organized and cleaned up and all that. But some of the things we were talking about today, you know, you saw our when we did the first major thing and we had that great big huge pile and that company that came to take the pile away yes we had to pay them but it was well worth it just to have it go and see i didn't have to get bogged down with 
well, who needs this? And where does this go? And what about this? I just put every single thing that I didn't use anymore and hadn't used for years into that pile. And yes, they will sell it. They sell it themselves. They donate it to organizations. They take whatever can't be used to the landfill. They'll even take your hazardous materials to the place where it needs to go. I think sometimes we get bogged down with what do we do with all this stuff that we don't need? Now, you can donate them all over the place. You could have a garage sale if you want to turn, you know, your former things that you no longer have need of into cash so that you can buy things that you do have need of. Now, in our case, we have never had a garage sale, okay? And I think that one of the reasons that we've never had a garage sale is because, first of all, we are the kind of people that do get bogged down with all those details. We end up getting stuck and we spin our wheels and, you know, and, and it just never happens. And so the other thing, too, is that we remember when we first started out, we had absolutely nothing, we had nothing. And when we wanted things, even clothing or things for our home or whatever, we had to find creative and alternative ways other than a retail store to go purchase those items. And oftentimes we did go to thrift stores, secondhand stores, Goodwill stores, you know, things like that. And we would find treasures, our, you know, other people's burden became our blessing. And we're at a place in time in our, in our marriage and in our life and in our history where our burdens can then go on and become someone else's blessing. And so it's a cycle of giving and helping others that just, we just like to continue in that, you know, in that place. So, so I just want to encourage, I know that we're not the only ones who go through this. We, one time, um, we did come face, we've seen this in other people's uh, lives as well, where um, we had, we knew this one person one time who really needed help. I mean, she was kind of on the edge there. So there were a lot of problems. I don't want to go into too many details because the last thing I would ever want to do is embarrass someone. Okay. And, but, but the fact is I could tell for the longest time that this was a situation that required help. Now I was overwhelmed too. I, you know, I didn't know what my place was. I didn't know how to help. I didn't know where to start with her. And finally, um, there came a point, God bless her. Her husband had left and, you know, she had these adult children living with her and it just, at that point, I felt like maybe I could do something. Her stove was broken and I, I, you know, Joe and I offered to buy her a new stove and we came home and we talked about it and we realized that that alone was not enough. That wasn't going to solve her problem because the, the main problem still existed. And that is just the inability to let go of the things that, the emotional attachment was there or, you know, what happens to me a lot of times is I'll say, oh, well, I remember this event or I spent good money for this item or, you know, so-and-so gave me this. I would never want to hurt their feelings by donating it or getting rid of it another way. And so then you just accumulate all this stuff, which does nothing but bog you down and control your life. And in our case, that's what's happening because I, I'm the kind of person, I can't even cook dinner until my house is, my kitchen is clean. Now, I will tell you that this last year, I am struggling with that. I am finding it very difficult because there are all these people here who never leave. They don't go to school. They don't go to work like they used to. And when they did, that was my time to go in and clean things up. And I was really, I had developed a really good pattern and habit of doing that. That's all gone to heck now. It doesn't happen anymore. And so I have to reinvent my own life. And I am constantly, I'm very slow at these things because I'm like everyone else. I get in this rut and I continue on in, in my ways. And I, I know I need to break free from this. And I really am trying. I'm trying and it's really becoming, it's a, like a burden to me. And I'm really trying and I am going to get a handle on this. But but my I can't even get my kitchen clean. It's really hard. We just we do need to try to find 
in this new environment that we're living in. We just, we have to, you know, reestablish our routines and our cycles and our schedules. Well, part of that for me is cleaning out my closets and getting rid of stuff because I can think more clearly. I can be more creative and I can be more available to my family to do the things that really matter to them when my head and my house are clear and organized. But it's a struggle. So back to my, you know, back to our friend from before, she would hang on to everything to the point where, so what happened? Joe and I, one thing led to another and we actually, and I'm not saying this is not for any other reason, but just to say, you know, sometimes people do need a little bit of help. Okay. And so buying the stove eventually led to us buying the entire house. She was able to take her equity, move on, find a space that was new and fresh and clean. We then took the home. We thought that we could, you know, oh, it's a long story. That That's a whole video all by itself. But it didn't work out the way we had hoped um, because we had suffered a job loss during that time. And we did end up, we ended up renovating that entire house and then losing it ourselves. It's a, it's a long, sad, kind of terrible story, but it did have a happy ending. I mean, she did get the freedom and the relief that, you know, that that family needed that. And, you know, and we have, I don't know, we've kind of recovered from it. We'll continue to recover from it. And, but it was really good lessons in many, many ways. But anyway, the point is, is that it, this, the stuff and the accumulation of stuff and the emotional attachment to things can really take over your life. So sometimes, you know, stuff is just stuff and you use it. It's there to, for you to use. And when you no longer have use of it, there's probably someone else who can get use from that item. OK, now we had a whole closet full of even me of dressy business clothes, you know, like I used to shop at Talbot's and Chico's and very nice clothing stores, Nordstrom, nice places because I owned a business. And at that time, I needed to dress and present myself in that way. Well, now I'm dealing in, you know, cleaning and and cooking and messes and caring and I could actually just wear scrubs every day and it would suit me and it would be the appropriate outfit for my lifestyle today. There are also things now back then I was you know this big and I found I found 50 belts in my closet. I had a belt to match every single outfit when my waist was this big back when I had a waist and and I actually could put a belt on. Well, turns out the belt actually fit Hannah. Can you believe that my waist was the same size as Hannah's? That just blew my mind. But but even giving her those belts, I thought, geez, they're they're kind of old fashioned. Are they in style? Is she going to wear them? Now, she has been wearing a belt every single day. She thinks they're cool. And I was very careful and selective in those belts to make sure that it wasn't anything that was so out of style or so weird or that she wouldn't be able to wear because I don't want to just take those belts from my closet and put them into her closet, which we finally were able to finish about a year ago. We made a video about that too. That was a struggle. And the reason that that was a struggle, maybe this will be a good place to end this story and then you guys can continue the conversation in the comments. You can go and subscribe to Angela's channel. Tell her that we sent her, sent you guys there. We'll put a link in the description. Um, I think you'll, some of you will enjoy it. Some of you don't really care about this stuff, but some of you will enjoy it. And so, and so you can do that and continue the conversation. Maybe even join her Facebook group if this is something you struggle with regularly. But what happened with Hannah when she was little and she, it was just her and Joel for a long time to begin with. And it didn't matter where we went. Now she was this adorable little child, you know, and I mean, and she is blind and she has, you know, what was an obvious disability and people were constantly showering her with gifts everywhere we went. We would go to antique stores or clothing stores or anywhere we went. People would come up, they would buy her jewelry, they would buy her a stuffed toy. And it's because 
the individual people that we were coming in contact with, to be perfectly honest with you, it's kind of because they felt sorry for her. And it's because there was something about Hannah and maybe something about us, I don't know, that just kind of struck a chord with them. And they felt led and moved to do something with her. And she enjoyed that. And we thought it was very sweet and endearing. And most of that stuff we kept for many, 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 many years. Some of that stuff she still has. You know, the things that she still uses and likes and treasures and wears. We have kept them. We've organized it. You know, and it, but I tell you guys, it was a process then and it is a process now. And so I hope that some of these stories will encourage you. I know that we're not the only ones who deal with this. Poor Joe, you know, he's been trying to clean his garage out. He struggles with having enough time to do all the things that he needs to do. He even bought a really fancy toolbox a few months ago, and the fancy toolbox is sitting there empty with all the tools still piled up. It just takes us so much time, and there's and we're trying to do so many things, and it is a process. But we appreciate you guys. We love you all. You know, um, those of you who have said that you'd like to continue to send cards and letters, you know, the thing that really speaks to us the most is the comments. Just leave us a nice comment. We know, we know that you care. We know that you love us. And thank you for proactively helping this family clean up their stuff. We appreciate you very, very much. Change has a